After the fantastic first part to this penultimate episode two-parter, My Adventures with Superman has delivered yet another great episode that takes a surprising and unique take on Superman. This video will be my review for My Adventures with Superman Season 1, Episode 9, titled Zero Day Part 2. The number one thing I was looking forward to in this episode was exactly what the trailer focused on, which was Superman being captured by and interrogated by the General. On one hand, I'll be honest, I was really expecting and maybe also hoping that this interrogation took up more of the episode, as I was really surprised at how quickly this part of the episode ended. On the other hand, for how short it was, the interrogation was handled really well, as even before the flashbacks to Zero Day, you really feel the General's anger and Clark's fear. It's a really great start to the episode, or rather the first Superman scene of the episode that builds upon the last episode's ending. I definitely expected to learn more about Zero Day from this episode given the title, but I couldn't anticipate how they would go about doing that in this virtual reality room where Clark can see everything. This was a great scene that showcases and elaborates on the backstory of the show as well as the villain's motivations, while also lending itself to a fantastically unique Superman story we'll get to soon, but also we get some key information from this scene that is definitely worth talking about. We hear the General being called Sam for the first time, which adds to what we basically already knew, which is that the General is Sam Lane, Lois's father. It was pretty obvious, but this confirms it, or at least Borderline does. As does the title of the next episode, which is the finale, which is Hearts of the Fathers. Additionally, we do see the symbol on the robots in the Zero Day event, and it looks identical to Brainiac's symbol from the comics. We also see this masked flying man who shoots lasers from his eyes, or at least from his mask, all before the invasion is ended by a mysterious ray of light. A lot yet remains unanswered, and considering there's only one episode left and it's only like 20 minutes, I don't think every one of these mysteries will be explained this season, but we the very least know that Brainiac is almost certainly involved, and he probably will be the villain either of the next season or the entire show, and regardless of that, it was really cool finally seeing Zero Day in what seems to be its entirety in an unexpected and effective way at that. The main reason I was so excited for this part of the episode is because of the exact clip shown in the trailer which unbeknownst to me was actually the final part of the interrogation as well, which was the part where Clark starts to cry, gaining clear sympathy from the general. This was great for a few reasons, like it being the beginning of Clark's inner conflict in this episode, of finding out that he might be a weapon while also inversely showing his humanity to the general, which all but convinces him to question his judgment. And I love this scene, but I couldn't help but feel like the general was convinced a bit too quickly. Maybe the episode would have benefited from having just one more scene of the interrogation to show the general breaking down a bit more organically, because I won't lie, I was disappointed by how quickly the interrogation ended. I thought, and hoped, it would take up a far larger portion of the episode and couldn't help but feel like the Newsboy Legion scenes being cut out, or at the very least cut down a bit, in favor of expanding the interrogation would have made the episode much better in the end. Still, what the scene did accomplish without a shadow of a doubt is establishing Clark's conflict in this episode, which is a wholly unique and super interesting one, of coming to terms with learning that he might be a weapon, which I thought was not just handled well, but it's genuinely one of my favorite Superman origin stories story revelations ever told, regardless of if it's actually true, just because of Clark's reaction to it. From asking how his people could do this, to crying in front of the general, to telling Parasite he never wanted to fight, he just wanted to help people, this episode excels at showing exactly what makes Superman so interesting. He's an all-powerful, godlike alien, and in this case, a weapon, or the very least he thinks he is, but he's more human than almost anyone. I especially love the scene of Clark telling Lois and Jimmy about the revelation, because it's here where we truly see Clark rationalizing it. He's so easily convinced that he's a weapon because it makes a lot of sense. He doesn't know the origin of its powers, so it makes sense that he would have super strength, heat vision, flight, and so many powers, and he was indeed an alien weapon built for invasion and conquest. And Clark's dialogue is just so realistic and well-written as a response or reaction to this potential revelation. This was also very clearly used in contrast to Lois's knowledge of the evil alternate universe Superman, who potentially all have similar similar backstories but succumb to being weapons, making for an interesting reaction from Lois, who is still incredibly adamant about Superman's good. This will undoubtedly continue into the finale because Jimmy found out about it at the end of the episode, which is a nice cliffhanger ending, or at the very least, a nice teaser for the next episode, and in fact, the trailer for the next episode shows exactly this. Superman's inner conflict continues further into a big fight with Parasite, who ended up being a more recurring threat this season than expected, at now having appeared in three episodes. 
This time, Parasite becomes a giant kaiju-style monster, which is very reminiscent, as is the final fight, of the last animated adaptation of Parasite from Superman Man of Tomorrow. Parasite adds a lot to the episode visually, both in his ever-changing glowing design, but also in the electricity flowing around him and in the scale in which the episode is allowed to reach given his size. And from that we get a very well animated and visually striking fight between Superman and Parasite that ended a clever use of Superman's powers of using his x-ray vision to find Ivo in the suit and tackle him out of it. It's not actually the fight that's important here, it's Superman's emotional struggle in the episode, which is aided by Jimmy and Lois' speech to the people of Metropolis. I didn't exactly know where this was going initially, I thought that Jimmy and Lois were about to convince the citizens of Metropolis to go actually help him fight Parasite, which didn't really make sense. Instead, the episode took a far more realistic approach at people helping Superman by turning off all the power to starve Parasite of energy. This was a really clever way to go about this, made for a very nice moment that definitely could have been corny with the whole speech to lend me your power cliche, but not only was the speech well written and exemplified Superman perfectly, and the way they went about the citizens helping Superman was, like I said, unexpected and realistic, so it gets a pass in that regard. Finally, for Superman in this episode, he and Lois share this really intense and well-animated kiss that was a really nice moment as well. Going backwards for a second, there is a good amount of non-Superman-centric content in this episode that I haven't talked about yet, as it is the weakest part of the episode, even if that isn't actually saying much. The episode actually started with Lois and Jimmy meeting the newsboy Legion and gaining their help in locating Superman, which the way they went about it, obviously they never would have found him unless he escaped, but it was still a cute scene that definitely helped to add to the build up to the final moment of the citizen wanting to give back to Superman. I like the newsboy Legion scenes, but like I said, I really think the episode would have been better off had they been cut down or replaced by more scenes in the interrogation room. After the scene of Superman crying, the General and Amanda Waller begin to disagree on how to handle Superman, which leads to Waller seemingly intentionally freeing the members of Task Force X. This escape has very clearly ended this version of Task Force X role in the show, as these Superman villains have now gone back to being in the wind, but also in a very surprising move. The episode has Livewire burn one of Slade's eyes, giving him his signature look. This was not at all how I would have anticipated how Slade would lose his eye, and I gotta be honest, I don't love it. Slade and Livewire did fight in episode 2, he was the one to capture her and was potentially the one to lead to her getting her powers, but in comparison to how he loses his eye in the comics or on Arrow or other adaptations, it feels so impersonal to him as well as just a bit anticlimactic. It's not a big deal and I understand that this universe is very different from the typical DC universe so I don't really mind. I did really like how they expanded Livewire's power set a bit more as well, but I just think that it was a bit anticlimactic and impersonal, so it was one part of the episode I didn't love. Another part was, I guess, just how Waller took over Task Force X from the General because it just seemed a bit too easy for her. I don't fully get how she was able to convince her superiors, and they did mention that was Checkmate, so that's another reveal, that Parasite's rampage and Sam's unwillingness to execute Superman is enough to just switch their roles, but if nothing else, Amanda Waller is now in a rightful place as head of the Suicide Squad. As of right now, there is zero members of the Suicide Squad, but I'm sure they're gonna build up a new one, so that's definitely not a bad thing. One thing I noticed about this episode while watching that I think sets it apart from maybe all the rest was the music, either in the rock music from Zero Day or the inspiring Superman theme from the climax. The music was particularly good in this episode, and I think music goes a very long way in movies and shows to add to a scene, so it's not a small thing to say that, musically speaking, this was probably the best episode of the series so far. That being said, I would not call this episode the best of the series so far, but it definitely gave episodes 5 and 8 a run for their money in a very well animated and well written episode that reveals a lot about the backstory of the plot, even though I wish it did reveal more, has some fantastic moments, music, and animation, all while telling a terrifically unique Superman story about dealing with the knowledge of learning that his people try to invade and he's a weapon in an episode that showcases exactly what makes Superman special, his innate humanity in contrast to his great power, the only thing holding this episode back is that some things may be moved a bit too quickly. However, this episode is another banger 9 out of 10. If the finale sticks the landing, My Adventures with Superman Season 1 will almost certainly go down as one of the best seasons of DCTV ever produced.